until a couple of years ago, I didn't know you even played guitar, much <laughs> less wrote music. And you're coming to this, you know, uh, band thing, trying to, uh, you know, be an artist uh, and and make music and whatnot. Uh, pretty late in life. Uh, w- w- why the the switch to this at this point? Yeah, uh, you're you're absolutely right. So um, when I was uh, I think 46, it was exactly seven years ago. Um, I got tired of watching my kids take piano lessons for 10 years before that. And, uh, and I had had this guitar in my basement that I had never touched, learned how to play. And since I was a teenager, I had always wanted to play rock and roll music and uh, be in a band. So I asked their piano teacher after a lesson one Sunday morning, I said, hey, uh, do you do guitar lessons? He's like, you know, I just hired some guy. And so uh, this guy named Adam Hoskins, who had been uh, one of the founders of Pokey Lafarge's band, um, started teaching me lessons. And uh, within a year, I started composing music. And uh, Life's a Bitch is actually one of the first three songs I ever wrote, and um, uh, which is, explains why it's so terrible uh, on the new record. And um, But um, no, I, I started composing, and then I... You know, I, I started um, trying to dig in and, and I got obsessed with it and put the band together within, I don't know, within a few months after that. So it, I'd been maybe playing for a year and a half and I'm trying to play now in the confines of a three person band <laughs> and, you know, terribly doing that. But I just kind of kept working at it and building these songs. And I always tried to. I thought that the most important thing, and I've done this all my life, is I try to, and it's not hard for me to do, but tr- you try to surround yourself with people who are better than you at what you're doing, which is super easy for me because everyone's better at, <laughs> than me at anything I try to do. And which is, Jason, why you and I used to work together. And so, um, so uh, you know, I, I, I think, but I, I think the big aha moment for me, though, was... Um, I was so bad at first, and uh, at the time, I uh, I hadn't addressed some uh, mental health issues with anxiety that I have. I felt like that I could distract people from my lack of musicality uh, by writing joke songs a la um, Tenacious D and uh, Wheeler Walker Jr. You know, there reached a point where, one, uh, the Me Too movement fundamentally changed comedy. Mm-hmm. And two, I started to get comfortable. And I think that was really the big factor. So I started to write songs that had greater meaning, and a bunch of them are actually on this record. Um, and uh, and then I started to finally get comfortable with my musicality. Because I had also, you know, at the same time where I'd never played guitar, I had also never sung outside of a shower. <laughs> um and uh thank god <laughs> yeah it, well i mean honestly you and i were at a karaoke event once and i remember you oh, sent Lord. me a picture of you making a like a questionable look on your face like this when i was trying to do karaoke and that was before any of this <laughs> well before any of this so yeah you're right jason i i had no background in this whatsoever and i still don't love the sound of my own voice but um i feel like I feel comfortable. Like I, I don't mind playing in front of pretty much anyone now. 